Hello, and welcome back. The next set of videos are going to be a little bit informal. Um, what I'm going to be doing is showing how I'm going to be developing the software for uh, my robot platform. Uh, we're developing it on an, an ESP32, and in order to do that, I uh, decided, well, you know, number one, I decided to uh, create a, uh, a small, like, I guess a platform, if you will, um, uh, a test board. Uh, kind of like, kind of like the, uh, kind of like what I did for uh, making the prototype. Uh, just uh, put it onto a breadboard and uh, um, added an LED and uh, and a servo. And uh, let me uh, let me uh, show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's this uh, here's this uh, dev board and whatnot. And you can see the uh, ESP32 down in the uh, bottom left hand corner. And you might have just noticed the servo moving there, coming back and going back again, and uh, the LED blinking. What this is, is it's uh, the uh, sweep servo test running uh, with only one servo uh, working, um, you know, normally meant to control the motor controllers, but uh, I don't need to actually do that in order to develop the software. This allows me, this little board is going to allow me to develop virtually just about everything I need before I actually put it onto the robot itself. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier since uh, I'm going to be developing it uh, over here on, well, you know, partly on my laptop here and uh, partly on a uh, um, on my desktop. Uh, it just depends on where and what I'm doing. Um, you know, but uh, it's a lot easier than hooking, hooking up to the uh, robot's ESP32 and worrying about the uh, you know worrying about the uh, motors and you know everything else whenever I do need to test the motor control and everything else but uh, we've got uh, yeah we've got uh, things that we got to build let me, uh, let me show you show you uh, this is a kind of a list um, of what's going to be built uh, we've got uh, basically different kinds of uh, libraries I've got to create uh, motion action planner navigation Something for the E-Trex unit, something for the uh, Victor uh, controls, um, a servo, server for the uh, web server and whatnot, as well as peripherals and maybe some communication stuff. You know, down here uh, we're going to be might be using the GPS library and uh, some kind of you know kind of some basically the servo library uh, that uh, was used in the Sweep thing, and uh, some kind of web server, and we're probably going to end up using Spiffs as well, which is. Uh, basically an SPI file, flash file system is what that stands for and uh, that'll be used to store the uh, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS for the uh, client uh, client stuff that the web server will serve up to the phone. Um, there's, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, we're going to be doing all this. So we're going to so, be uh, do it, doing that and uh, building building the software for, for the robot in that manner. And uh, I'm going to, well, this uh, first part, what I'm going to be doing is basically coming up with a basic framework uh, for, the, for the system and uh, getting things stubbed out. And hopefully, uh, whenever I get that done, then I will uh, upload it onto the uh, Junkbotics GitHub and uh, you guys can uh, check it out and then I'll just move on to the next thing and uh, just keep rolling until the whole uh, piece of software is uh, you know all the software firmware you know, web server and everything else is uh, working uh, great on the uh, prototype or <laughs> on this breadboard thing and uh, then uh, we'll just uh, well we'll try it out for real see what actually do we'll see what actually happens uh, so see you soon <laughs> All right, hello, welcome back. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you is uh, some of the code that I've written for this uh, framework uh, to get us started. And uh, what we have here, uh, first off, is the uh, main controller code. Um, it's called fmcontroller.ino. Again, this is uh, done for the Arduino. Um, on the Arduino IDE um, development environment uh, with the ESP32 core installed. Um, 
I'm just showing you this here, not in the Arduino environment because uh, it's easier to do it inside of uh, VS Code. But um, we can see here that we have a few uh, libraries uh, that I created. They're all prefixed with Jumpbotics. And uh, then uh, this uh, one uh, ESP32 servo, which probably shouldn't actually be in there now that I'm looking at it, but that's all right. Um, and uh, some uh, some some constants defined, or well, just defines. They're not really constants. Um, and uh, then some instantiation of some objects and whatnot, and then just basically the uh, blink sketch or whatnot. Uh, one thing you might have noticed, and I probably should to update the uh, test code is I had to put this in this built-in LED built-in uh, pointing to um, the uh, GPIO2. Uh, I can't exactly remember which pin that's on, but um, GPIO uh, GPIO2 um, is the built-in LED on the on the ESP32. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, for some reason it's not defined within the core. Um, so the blink sketch doesn't actually compile without this uh, uh, put into place. Now I think there are some of the other some of the other versions of the core. I shouldn't say the core itself, but different versions of the boards uh, that you can select uh, from the menu um, actually do have it because I, whenever I was testing this, I didn't notice it when I made those made those original prototype tests. Um, but uh, whenever I decided to go ahead and use the, uh, I believe it's the ESP dev module or something like that, uh, ESP32 dev module or something, it's like the default, I guess, um, after doing some research, um, that I noticed this. And this is actually a kind of a common problem with the ESP32 is that you have to define this, define if you're using the built-in uh, <laughs> goofy stuff. Anyhow, so we have this um, this main controller here. I'm going to show you one of the what I'm going to call the bare bones bare bones library. It doesn't have much in it. Um, this beacon, um, you can see, just you know some you know the 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 initial constructor um, bare loop. Uh, one thing about this is that I'm going to try. <laughs> we'll see how well it works as I build this. I'm going to try to make every single one of these uh, libraries and such that are being called um, to be non-blocking. And um, I can show you kind of what that is. Um, this is all commented out because I haven't built this out yet. But the idea is that, you know, we just do the whole Millis um, tests and whatnot. And this actually comes from uh, this library over here. That's why it looks kind of weird. But essentially calling this loop inside the main loop down here, you know, so you'd be, you know, you'd have like junk body, you know, you know or something like a LED beacon dot loop, and that would trigger whatever other code um, on a periodic basis, and, um, you know, it's basically the same thing as the whole blink without delay type, you know, code. It's not quite a real-time operating system, but it'll be good enough for this this stuff. I just want it non-blocking because I I don't know if that's going to matter much, but uh, you know, it's not hard to implement, so might as well. Um, the, uh, you know, so this is like most of these libraries that uh, you'll see if you, if you download this, you know, before I get, you know, coding on it again and uploading and such, you'll see that they're pretty bare. Uh, most of them, there's actually a uh, few different libraries. There's beacons, one called comms, one called etrex for the etrex GPS system, one called nav for uh, navigation, one called planner. That's I call it a route planner. It's not really going to plan a route, um, but it could be expanded to that in the future. Um, and then one called web server. They uh, they're all inside uh, the libraries for uh, for. Uh, for the Arduino, um, you, you'll, you, you basically point your uh, sketch folder over at this main folder, and there'll be instructions on the uh, Junkbotics uh, GitHub repo on how to do all that, um, and they'll they'll show up, um, and you'll be able to use them and everything. Um, I wanted to make these into libraries because it just would make for a more modular and easier to maintain piece of software um, as well as make it easier for me to develop rather than it be one giant monolithic piece of code. Um, so 
the only other one, these all these, except for the Victor 884, the Victor 884 one actually has more functionality in it. Uh, I don't know, I got, uh, I got kind of wrapped up in it and I started writing stuff. Um, so this is the uh, header file. You can see that we have several different defines. We got the ESP32 servo, which is why I probably shouldn't have been into the FM controller over there. I think I just had that left over from something else. Um, and then uh, you can see some various uh, things, as well as our ramping, uh, f uh, ramping code and whatnot, and uh, loop. And we can kind of can show you what that, uh, what that ultimately looks like. Uh, get over here. Um, we've got the initialization of the timers for the servo for the for the uh, servo library, and uh, we've got uh, this uh, do throttle ramp and set throttle. Um, setting the throttle to whatever you need to, um, setting the throttle ramp, meaning you're at a particular throttle and you want to go to a different throttle. So say you're at one, say you're at a, a throttle of 90, which would be, it's zero through 180 because that's the servo range. 90 would be in the center, so zero throttle. You want to go from that to full throttle in one direction, so 180 it will say, okay, go from 0 to 180 over a period of this delay this delay piece right here. Um, and the idea is that uh, you set it, you set the throttle ramp, you set where you want to go, and then it will essentially go through and get to that ramp point. And, you know, here's where it does it. You just basically call the, call the uh, loop every time inside of the main loop and it will call do throttle ramp and it'll check to see that you know if you put a delay time of 10 milliseconds or whatnot it'll take it that long in order to ramp all the way to wherever um, in the meantime if you actually you could actually change the the throttle ramp or you know to some other value um, or you could just call set throttle to set it to a different throttle because it's always moving toward current throttle as as you can see here when you do the do throttle ramp. Um, you could just set it and that way as it's going through the code it can say okay I want to reverse direction okay well I'll go backwards and drop back down you know subtract until you get to the uh, until you get to the uh, right value. Um, I'm not sure that necessarily all this code is correct or anything but um, you know, we're building it that's uh, that's the whole point here I just want to show you what's uh, what's being built over time um, and then we have the constructor here for the uh, uh, for the uh, Victor 884 um, to set everything and uh, these uh, since they're you know since it's all you know since all uh, you know class object oriented type stuff um, as I showed over here we have two motors and so we instantiate it twice one called left motor one called right motor point it to the uh, proper pin that's defined up here kind of doing the same thing with the LED beacon uh, where we set the LED beacon or the audible beacon call it odd beacon LED beacon are the two objects that get instantiated and then that way they will point to wherever and we can just you know like you know inside of these we might have like that you know strobe function we can just call it and it'll flash the beacon um, or you know we could call the same thing and it will beep the uh, speaker go beep 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 or whatever <laughs> um, so uh, you know so that's uh, that's kind of basically how we're going going with it um, you know I've got to still write some stuff in here to kind of flesh out the steps of how things are going to go and of course I still have to uh, flesh out all the other uh, all the other um, classes and whatnot and instantiate those and everything all that other boring stuff um, so you know this is going to take a little while to do but I'm hoping that I can show you along the way what it all looks like as I go through it step by step and you'll have an idea yourself of what you can do with your own code and maybe you could even use this as a base if you wanted to um, beyond that uh, you know it uh, you know it's uh, it's just going to take a little take a little time and take a little while and uh, again it'll all be up on the github for you to examine as we go through it as I, as I build it so um, <laughs> let me get back to this code and <laughs> see what I can do all right
Oh. Uh.